Next we have the Runanga Community Swimming Pool Trust. Unfortunately, the two driving members of this project are not able to be here today due to unforeseen circumstances. So instead, with one week's notice, we have the wonderful Sarah Van Loy from the Grey District Council representing them. Please give them a very warm welcome to the stage as they come upstage. Firstly, thank you to Trust Power for the support that they've given us over the years right around the New Zealand communities. It's brilliant. And also to Northland for hosting this function here today. It's just great. Renunga. You all know about Renunga. Renunga is the home of champions on the West Coast. They've had a lot of international football players and a lot of national sports people. They're very passionate about their town. It's a small town. It's also the home of the Labour Party. It's also the home of unions. It's a town that has really struggled through the years. Over 30 or 40 years, it's really been going backwards. But the people in that town are very passionate about it, and they will drive any project to make it work. It's also the home of solid energy. And it's also the home of Spring Creek Mine, which just closed too. And this group has actually been passionate over 20 years to build a swimming pool. And just last week, the, the innovation worked out what they're going to put in their office for wallpaper, and yes, it was solid energy sheer script. So <laughs> here today we've got Sarah Van Louie, who will tell you that story about the hard slog with limited resources, how they got this swimming pool up and running with a limited group of people. Sarah. Hello, my name is Sarah Van Louie and in my presentation today I'm going to tell you how the Renangan community went from having a basic in-ground pool with no roof to a flash new swimming complex. In a moment I will show you a short video from around 1940s about the Renangan Township. The upthrust of the Southern Alps made Westland what it is. It made deep valleys for Westland's flooding rivers. Raggy summits blown by Westland winds. Close pressed among these misty hills by the townships at Westland, sheltering where they can, wherever there is cold. Hemmed close in by the hills and the weather, these Westland mining towns drove close and friendly. Those same conditions, added to the hardy nature of their work, keep the miners strongly organized. The most notable example of the success of this community spirit is Renanga near Greenland. Coal has given Renanga a measure of prosperity. Nearly every miner owns his own home, and the housing is good. Coal from the Liverpool, James and Strongman mines has pulled Renanga out of the hard times of the last decade. Bungalows and cottages are all well furnished. The miner spends his wages on good living. The refrigerator is a common expression of his determination that hard work earns a reward in comfort. These are fortunate communities indeed. There's a good school, and in Renanga, swimming baths. If a community may be judged by its children, then Renunga is a happy and a smiling place. Most of the local amenities result from community effort. Like the swimming baths, the bowling green is a community affair. Renunga works to get these playgrounds. The vision. With the original Renunga pool being built over 75 years ago, the Renunga and Grey district communities knew they needed to work towards updating one of their favourite existing recreational facilities. A public meeting was called on the 16th of August 1993, the Renunga Pool Roofing Committee was formed. The estimated cost to re-roof the existing pool was quoted at $100,000. After numerous community projects including cake stalls, raffles, discos and fun days at the pool to name a few, come 2002 the community and committee had now raised $75,000. However, the cost to re-roof the pool had now risen to $150,000. Of course, this didn't put a damper on things for the community. They got straight back into their fundraising efforts. By the time 2009 had rolled around, which was a whole 16 years after the project idea came about, the price had once again skyrocketed due to building code requirements. The committee then decided rather than just re-roof the pool, they would demolish and rebuild a whole new pool to benefit the community at a cost of $1.1 million. The committee worked closely with the Grey District community Grey District Mayor Tony Cockshorn and local sponsors and finally the money was raised and the contract was awarded to Evan Jones Construction, the committee. As I mentioned earlier, the committee was formed on the 16th of August 1993 and consisted of 12 members. By 1995, the committee held seven members, all working hard, volunteering many hours towards the project. Come 2004, the committee, then with six members, took legal advice and formed a trust called the Renunga Community Swimming Pool Trust. 
During 2009, when the dream of building an awesome new swimming facility was finally becoming a reality, the Pool Trust volunteered many hours of labour for work outside the main contract, including landscaping, seating and establishing an outdoor barbecue area. Just to give you an idea of the committee members' commitment, Chairman Mr Chris Frogley, who has been on the committee since day one, has put in over 3,500 hours of volunteer work into this project. Well done, Chris. History of Renunga. Renunga has a close association with coal mining over the years. The main township is adjacent to the Spring Creek mine and the community has been affected by the highs and lows of this industry. Renunga is located seven kilometres north of Greymouth and has a population of around 1,200 and approximately 100 children attending the Renunga Primary School. Renunga's lack of recreational activities and facilities available to children in the summer months is evident. Over the recent years, the community has seen an increase in disorderly behaviour and willful damage, particularly amongst young people. With the upgrade of the pool, this has come to a head recently. What the pool has to offer to Renunga? What kind of pool did raising $1.1 million get the Renunga community? The main pool was 25 metres long, with a maximum depth of 1.5 metres. There is also an extra slope learner's pool, male and female changing rooms, two sets of disability changing rooms, and an outdoor barbecue and seating area. Due to the pool not being heated, the pool operates from December until March, April each year, with around 2,000 admissions per year, mostly being children and teenagers. In addition, Renunga Primary School is a huge supporter and user of the facility. Even though the pool relies solely, solely on the sun to keep the water warm, water temperature usually sits around 27 degrees Celsius and bumps up to 30 degrees when there is a run of hot days on. Opening day. The pool was officially opened by Mayor Tony Cockshorn and Chairman Chris Frogley on the 10th of December 2011, with a fun day out for the whole community, including free swimming, sausage sizzle, face painting and a treasure hunt for the children. The Trust had major input into the design of the new complex. To date, they have raised over 500,000 in funding and are working on a further 150 to complete the project. They are currently evaluating the options and hope to have the two pools heated within the new text next two years. The project has been a huge success for Renunga and the wider community, and hearing the happy children swimming and playing in the new pool makes the whole community smile. Here's a short clip of the children on the opening day to follow. Okay, well it was the children jumping in the pool on the opening day having a great time, so <laughs> just imagine that out there. <laughs> cool, thank you. Thank you.